As many times as I walk by here, I never even looked at this building. I, I've noticed it because it seems as if it was more antique. Well, I think it's a very elegant building, an art gallery or a museum. It could be used to maintain records. It just reminds me of an organization with money or government. It might be the, like the courthouse from ancient courthouse from the 1700s. Some sort of secret organization. I think it's just for the Illuminati. It could be a great home. It's been a source of enlightenment for a lot of people. When you step into the Athenaeum, you're surrounded by history. It's spectacular. It's a community organization. The Athenaeum, if nothing else, attracts really interesting individuals. The wonderland of books, knowledge. It's a place where researchers are beloved and welcome. It's almost a magical experience to be able to go there. The building says private club, inspired by the Reform Club in London. In 1800, Philadelphia was the Athens of America. It was the seat of American culture, arts, literature, painting, and architecture. And the Athenaeum is a kind of living memory of, of that moment. The organization began in 1814 in space above Anthony Finley's bookstore as a reading room and a spot for people to gather and play chess. We moved into our current building in 1847. It was the very first building which was designed in a Renaissance revival style. John Notman brought with him from London the taste for the Italianate brownstone. Notman was young enough to respond to the great the upheaval in taste, the Gothic revival, and the, the Italianate. And he gave us gems of both of them a few blocks away from each other. Everybody was sort of agape at how beautiful it was. It's not just thrown together. It's really imagined by somebody. The Athenaeum also offers a glorious sequence of modulated spaces. It's the sense that the architect is trying to orchestrate the whole experience of the building. It's robust dignity. One enters through a vestibule, and then you discover this rising lozenge of space to your right, which is one of the great public stairs in the city. My reaction was to stand absolutely still. It's breathtaking. Rising through measured intervals to a skylight, that the whole thing bathed in light, urging you, coaxing you, cajoling you upwards. Walking into the library is to a delight. It's not just a bunch of bookshelves. <laughs> this sense of creating a culture and the importance of books and learning. The high ceilings, the beautiful columns, the globe. It's unexpected. But we have a big emphasis on getting to know our members, saying hello, knowing their names when they come in. As a six-year-old, it was a wonderful place to be. Not everybody likes four-year-old grandsons in libraries, but the Athenaeum loves them. It's very welcoming. A perfect place for me to work. You can go to bars, you can go to coffee houses. The free library is fantastic, but it doesn't have that sense of calm, that sense of quiet that you really get at the Athenaeum. To have someone know who you are and know what you like to read and offer suggestions and discuss what you read last. The Athenaeum is centered around books, reading hours, story hours for kids a space for author events. We've, we've had um, David McCullough speak there right after 9-11 and talked about what it meant to be a patriot. It was just transporting. It's people expressing ideas and exchanging ideas. The Literary Award began in 1950, and from the very beginning, it was dedicated to a Philadelphia author. It's an ongoing prize that really honors strong work that comes from Philadelphia authors. We've had writers like Robin Black for fiction, Stephen Freed for nonfiction, Dr. Adrian Rain. Ben Yagoda, Steve Lopez, Camille Paglia, Ed Bacon and Jerry Mangione and Digby Baltel and people like that. It has an incredibly rich history. There's like a literary community here that's waiting to get together. And I think the one place that, that we get together is in the list of all the people who have won the Athenaeum Literary Prize.
The Bonaparte collection was right there. So Joe Bonaparte, when he left Spain, settled in New Jersey across the river. There's the portrait, there's some beautiful furniture, statuary. Uh, it's quite a collection. I thought I was back in Europe. It's the drawings of the Capitol in Washington by Thomas U. Walter. They show all the details down to the rivets. They show the dome. Lori Olin, the well-known landscape architect, did a series of sketches, and they were enlarged by our reproduction department. They were so light-filled and so happy and so exuberant. Sarah Josepha Hale was the editor of Godey's Ladies Book, which was a major fashion magazine, women's fashion magazine of the 19th century. Her son actually died fairly young. I found the letter informing her of his death. It's a very intimate thing. It reinforced the idea of being a part of somebody's history, of it continuing on. We did an exhibition on the centenary of the death of Frank Furness. The mark of Furness is everywhere on this city, and we were able to bring a trove of his architectural sketchbooks into the Athenaeum. To be vital, you need to key into the values and interests of your market, the younger people who are moving in and around Philadelphia. It has to be the space to make it special, to meet people, to mingle. You have to be dynamic, you have to connect with a new audience. Making the next generations aware of the value of the collection of the Athenaeum, that is intimately tied to the history of the city. I love the Athenaeum. Every time I walk in, I feel delighted. It's a place that inspires me. I love the Athenaeum. It makes me feel connected to the past. It is a wonderful place. Everybody should visit. It's irreplaceable. <laughs>